Okay, and the recording starts now. Excellent. Okay, Isaiah, you can take the floor. Good night, everyone. Welcome, 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 and welcome to Startup Hello Sinusha. It's a meeting tonight where we're going to have a wonderful time presenting to you two of St. Lucia's newest entrepreneurs strutting their stuff tonight. And so what we're going to be doing tonight is, first of all, we're going to just um, be on to the most high. We're going to start in, a, in some prayers so we can start us off right. So and we have a volunteer. Anita? Anita, do you am supposed to pray? <laughs> Yes, I need to, so go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, let's all talk to the Almighty. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for your goodness to us today. We thank you for taking us through the day and bringing us all together to this session this evening. We ask you to please hasten the presence of all those others who are current from the different parts of St. Lucia, the Caribbean, and the rest of the world. Help us all to have a wonderful sitting here. Be with the presenters, be with the expert panelists, be with the rest of the participants, and help us to have a meaningful time here, we pray, especially for the presenters. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good stuff, good stuff. So now that we've started it all, all right in the place it's supposed to be, tonight we are going to bring to you a wonderful menu starting out with our, our local organizers and our expert panel. I would like to welcome everyone who's going to participate tonight. We have two presenters tonight and uh, well, let's just start off with our expert panel. All right, so we have an expert panel tonight who's going to sh explain, help the presenters tonight in in explaining how helping the businesses, giving them key advice into how the businesses can move forward. That's important because last year, I myself was here. I was in that position where I had my idea on a yellow sheet of paper and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to turn. And so tonight we have expert panelists who will be able to help our presenters tonight. And we also will have in attendance a representative from the U.S. Embassy, Bob in from Barbados, and uh, also a representative from the Taiwanese Embassy, who will be speaking to us as well. Okay. So now we're gonna proceed from there. All right, and we're just going to our expert panelists. I would like to ask some of our members of our expert panel to at least um, welcome yourselves to the rest of the audience tonight. Okay, so we will go ahead and start with introductions of um, team members, and then we'll go into introductions of the expert panel. So welcome, everybody. My name is Michelle Samuel, and I am the head organizer of Startup Huddle St. Lucia. And I would like to also welcome you to the very final, final event for the year. We're closing off the, the Christmas season with an amazing event, wonderful guest speakers, and also our presenters and special guests who are joining us from across the globe. I'm so excited for this event. We're capping it off in a grand way. And I would like to welcome my other team members to introduce themselves and let them know the role they play in this wonderful, wonderful program. Lisa? Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Yad. I hold the capacity of um, project manager in Startup Hotel St. Lucia. And all this has been a lot of work so far. Happy, happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. <laughs> Anita, go ahead. Yes, good night, everybody. I'm Anita James. I'm the review team member of Startup Hotel St. Lucia, basically. I look at those who are interested in doing presentations on a monthly basis. 
and see whether they meet the criteria for them to present. Thank you so much, Anita. Let's go to Isaiah, the lone gentleman. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Isaiah of New Lord, and I am the marketing dude in this company here. Uh, my job is to make sure that persons around the island and around the world know mm -hmm. about South Apato and encourage others who would like to come in and present as well to, you know, step up and do what I did and um, show the whole world what you got. Excellent. Thank you so much, Isaiah, for that. And now we'll allow our expert panel to say a little bit about themselves. Let's go to Mr. Sean St. Clair. Good evening. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Sean St. Clair, I'm a massage therapist, also do digital marketing for a couple of different companies, also a personal trainer. Been a massage therapist, personal trainer for over 20 years, digital marketing over 10 years. Oh, thank you so very much, Mr. St. Clair. And what a wealth of knowledge and experience. Thank you so much for joining us. And our very last expert panelist, we have Mrs. Rita Dyer. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I am Rita Dyer, an educator all my life. But now I'm more focused with TVET education and um, assessor, verifier, auditor for Sacred Sports International. My expertise so to speak, is food and nutrition. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mrs. Dyer, for that intro. And of course, we have some wonderful guest speakers who will be um, speaking to you. We have one from the US Embassy, Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS. And we have another speaker from the Taiwanese Embassy in St. Lucia. And we want to welcome them this evening. But before we hear from them, I want to give you a brief understanding of what Startup Huddle St. Lucia is. I'm going to share my screen while I make this brief presentation, and then we move right into our very first speaker for this evening, Mr. Leland Lazarus of the U.S. Embassy, the Eastern Caribbean, and the OECS. Please let me know when you can see my screen. I'm about to share. Is my screen visible to everybody? Yes, it is. Awesome, awesome. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so let us begin with this presentation. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Startup Huddle St. Lucia where we educate, engage and connect. It is for entrepreneurs run by entrepreneurs. And my name, of course, as I said before, is Michelle Samuel. I'm the head organizer and team leader, as well as a Startup Huddle ambassador to the Caribbean and Latin America with Gen HQ. But what really is Startup Huddle St. Lucia? What is it that we do? Startup Huddle is a simple way to engage entrepreneurs in and from communities across St. Lucia. On the second Wednesday of each month, Startup Huddle St. Lucia offers one or two local entrepreneurs an opportunity to present their startups to an expert panel and a diverse audience of mentors, advisors, peers, and most importantly, the community. We also welcome startups from other Huddle chapters who have an interest in our local market. And this is our team. We comprise of Lisa Yard, Anita James, Shadia Adonis, Isaiah Lord, and that is our management team. And of course, we have a wealth of experience from our SHSL ambassadors, such as Michaela Charles Noel and others. Now, give a little idea as to what it really is. So Startup Huddle St. Lucia is easily the biggest connection point for entrepreneurs in St. Lucia to engage. Our events are all organized by members of the local community. We encourage the support of our local community while engaging early businesses six months to three years in operation. Whether they're investors, founders, or aspiring entrepreneurs, attendees build close relationships with the companies that support or sponsor. Now, the event format is typical across the globe where Startup Huddle is hosted. We have 10 minutes usually for open networking, and that would have been in a face-to-face -face setting. Five minutes for opening remarks and introductions, such as what you're going through right now. 
five minutes for guest speakers, and we have two this evening, six minutes for each presenter followed by Q&A, team announcements, and then finally community announcements and closing remarks. Now Startup Huddle St. Lucia, the global host is the Global Entrepreneurship Network. It is run by Sled Terra, which is the national host, and we are proudly sponsored by the US Embassy, Eastern Caribbean, and the OECS. We would like to also thank our national regional partners. We have Wailai, the Taiwanese, um, Taiwanese Embassy in St. Lucia. We have COESL, that's the um, Caribbean Center of Excellence for Sustainable um, Livelihoods, that's a mouthful. And of course, we have Gen Caribbean. And of course, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, on our website and also our event site. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for bearing with me. And I would like to quickly now introduce our first speaker for the evening, Mr. Leland Lazarus. Leland? Michelle, thank you so much. Um, and everybody, it is such a pleasure to be with you guys tonight. Uh, my name is Leland Lazarus. I am originally from New York, uh, from Long Island in particular. I uh, don't know if anybody in St. Lucia has any family members in the United States or, or specifically New York, but um, it, it really is a pleasure to meet everybody. I have been in the region for about a year and a half now, and I absolutely love the Caribbean. I've actually visited uh, St. Lucia quite a few times, and I absolutely love it. Uh, and of course, because of uh, COVID-19, I haven't been back in a while, but I hope that soon, very soon, we will be able to um, be back to normal and we'll be able to sort of see each other uh, in person. Um, I wanted to again thank Michelle uh, so much and also uh, Slatera and her team for Slatera for hosting today's uh, Startup Huddle. Uh, I think that we're here to recognize the incredible contributions that entrepreneurs make to the economic development of both St. Lucia and the United States. Um, we think that entrepreneurs strengthen communities and provide innovation, they create employment and they propel societies forward. Um, just thinking about some of the big ideas that often started small in the United States, for example, you know, Apple starting with Steve Jobs um, garage, right? He started it in his own garage or Facebook um, and having Mark Zuckerberg starting Facebook in his dorm room. Um, Right there in St. Lucia, I've met several entrepreneurs like Michelle and others who are pushing their ideas forward in fashion and food and music and even financial services. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that the U.S. Embassy for St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean is deeply committed to supporting uh, our region's entrepreneurs. Our leadership and uh, business programs like the Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative, or YLI for short, uh, of which Michelle is a uh, alumna, um, has helped young entrepreneurs launch their startups and other projects. We actually started the YLI program in 2016. And since then that network has grown to more than 300 fellows across the region. Um, I think that the YLI community also includes an online platform open to uh, any entrepreneur who wants to take this step forward. Um, actually, I would say that you please take the time to go to whylie.state.gov. That is whylie.state.gov to explore some of the uh, online resources there. Um, it provides actually online courses that can help you improve your uh, grant writing skills, or plan fundraising or marketing campaigns. And the best part about it is that it's free of charge. So we know that this is a hard time to do business. Uh, we know that COVID-19 has upended so much of uh, what we've all taken for granted. But I think that if there's more than one group that can really take advantage of uncertainty, it is entrepreneurs. Uh, so I think that your flexibility, your creativity, and your outside the box thinking is exactly what the world needs right now. Um, and so with that, I again, wanna thank Michelle for uh, the incredible things she's uh, doing. And I look forward to hearing what everybody has to offer uh, in today's Startup Huddle.
Thank you so very much, Leland, for that presentation and for joining us this evening. Okay, so I want to thank again the US Embassy um, for being one of the sponsors, or should I say the sole sponsor of this program for believing in us. They were the very first backers of this program when we first started in 2018, and we are so excited to continue to make an impact in the local entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I now give the floor over to Isaiah Lord, who will then now introduce our second speaker for the evening. Isaiah? Our second speaker for the evening is Jonathan from the Taiwanese Embassy. I had the pleasure of meeting Jonathan a couple of months back. And I can tell you that uh, he has a passion uh, for the island and for the startups on the island. So Jonathan, why don't you tell the rest of us a little bit about yourself? Okay, thank you so much, Isaiah. And, and also thank you so much, Michelle. And I think it's really a great honor uh, to speak on behalf of the Taiwanese Embassy in St. Lucia today. And then uh, before I start, I also would like to thank uh, Leland from the US Embassy. Actually, it all starts with uh, Leland. Leland introduced uh, Michelle to our embassy. And then uh, so there's been uh, some uh, Further cooperations follow up. So uh, we we would like to thank you, Leland, for the uh, for introducing and also to, for uh, put everyone together. So uh, so to the uh, speakers, presenters, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, good evening. Well, uh, like I said, uh, Michelle asked asked me to share some of the uh, to share some of the stories uh, uh, and also the cooperations between Taiwanese Embassy and, and also the Start Terra uh, or Startup Hub in St. Lucia. Well, uh, I have to say that although uh, Taiwan has worked with St. Lucia government very closely on, on a very comprehensive uh, scale of field, uh, such as uh, agricultural technology and ICT, TVET, but however, uh, startups has always has not been one of the major areas. Well, but uh, however, uh, I, I think uh, uh, with, 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 the, uh, with the COVID-19 and situation, so that uh, our embassy starting to realize that uh, we need to <clears throat> encourage the startup, we need to encourage the local businesses. So uh, it's gonna be one of the major areas they will want to do more in the future. So. So uh, actually, Embassy became uh, one of the partners and then uh, provided in-kind support to uh, Slatera. And also, we work with the US Embassy and also the Slatera to have the first ever virtual uh, workshop on the 5th of November 2020. And then uh, I think it's a very meaningful event because not only it is the first joint effort between the three countries on uh, promoting startup issue, and I think it also uh, opens a window for the further cooperations in the future. And for instance, uh, I would like to say that uh, Taiwan provides many capacity building programs and online workshops this year. And then uh, we invited uh, some uh, uh, women entrepreneurs from uh, Slatera and also uh, Michelle introduces uh, some of the participants and we think it's a very nice uh, and a very successful uh, cooperation and we're gonna do more in the future. And also, uh, I would like to say that as a constructive member, uh, uh, development partner, uh, Taiwan has always been keen to work with St. Lucia to promote trade and businesses. And then uh, uh, Taiwan and St. Lucia has actually have jointly held, uh, we call the annual trade shows, Taiwan St. Lucia trade show for 12 uh, years since 2007. However, this year, because of the pandemic, so the trade show is not going to happen uh, for the physical expo. Uh, but uh, but uh, we so so but the Taiwan embassy would like to still would like to do more. So we have uh, we create a, a framework called a Taiwan St. Lucia Business Partnership Week. And then uh, startup uh, uh, became one of the uh, uh, major topics that we would like to discuss. And then because of the uh, virtual workshop, I think uh, for the Taiwanese embassy, we can reach out to local startups and also understanding the needs and also incorporate them into the future cooperation programs. For instance, uh, 
because because of the activity uh, the event and also uh talking to the uh office officers in the ministry of, of commerce we understand that access to finance is a very critical actually a very critical challenges for the uh, startups in St. Lucia. So uh, I would like to share with you some uh, good news is that uh, next year, starting from next year, I think uh, probably around second quarter, Taiwanese government will, intro will introduce a microloan project to St. Lucia. Uh, although the scale and also the content we are, we are still uh, planning, but uh, I think it's going to be one of the uh, major events for the next year. And I think that is because of the uh, uh, cooperation between the uh, Taiwanese embassy and U.S. embassy, and also the South Terra, and then um, uh, so for uh, which assists us to make up our minds, and also uh, knowing that it's gonna be what, what we are going to do in the future. And please allow me to take some time to share a little bit uh, of Taiwan's. Uh, uh, Taiwan's achievement at the uh, at the at the startup area. Uh, well, it's the first time I'm doing this. I'm not sure if you can see the screen that I share. Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, start on the 2018. Uh, Taiwanese government, in order to encourage the development of startups, actually we we uh, we announced an action plan for enhancing Taiwan's startup ecosystems. There's been a lot of strategies and targets, but I would like to share uh, with you with the uh, startup here in Saint Lucia, is that uh, if you can see Taiwanese government in order to uh, cultivating and then uh, recruiting talent, which I highlighted in. Uh, I, I, I highlighted with the uh, uh, red color is that we encourage uh, foreign uh, foreign talents to apply for the uh, informal go cars, and also uh, we loosen some restrictions on foreign talent employments, and then we encourage you to uh, to to work in Taiwan to start your business in Taiwan. So I would like to share this to some of the solution startup. Uh, teams or businesses that if you are interested, actually you can even go to Taiwan, and and also uh, after the issue of the action plan, Taiwanese government, uh, we uh, we create a, a we create a, a sign that uh, in order to promote the uh, Taiwanese uh, startups. So so you can see that probably you can gonna see more. Open, open, uh, about this sign around the Saint Lucia, and also I would like to share with you is that uh, Taiwanese government would provide a lot of capacity building programs and uh, scholarship opportunities um, to uh, not only students but also not only to public uh, sectors but also to private sectors. So I would like to encourage you. To follow our Facebook and also Twitter to uh, to get the uh, most updated uh, informations. Okay. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff, Jonathan. Yes, and then so uh, in conclusion, I think that um, from my personal point of view is that uh, uh, Taiwanese government. Taiwanese government, uh, our role is to, to play, uh, our role is to become the bridge to connect Taiwan and St. Lucia, uh, the people from Taiwan and St. Lucia. And then, uh, so, uh, in the future, I think our embassy will continue to bridge two sides, uh, to share, uh, your best practices and exchange ideas. Although there's been a COVID, uh, but I believe that we can do that online. Uh, our embassy will introduce the mentors or the uh, speakers uh, from Taiwan to share their uh, experiences. And also, I think, uh, uh, like I said before, as far as I know, we're going to provide this year, we provide about 53 opportunities to uh, uh, capacity building opportunities to the officers and also private sectors uh, to, to, to go to Taiwan or, or go online. Next year, we're going to pr uh, provide more. 
So I will, and we're gonna pu uh, put the information on our Facebook. So please do follow on Facebook and Twitter. And also, uh, we, we will try to, uh, bring some of the, uh, like, uh, information about, uh, global competition from Taiwan and business matching opportunities. Even some of the angel funds, as far as I know, uh, the angel funds in Taiwan, they also open to the foreign, uh, startup teams. As long as you are uh, very competitive and then very attract, you have very attracting uh, ideas. And last but not the least, uh, 2020 Taiwanese government provide 27 scholarship opportunities, uh, to solution students, uh, to study either bachelor, master, or even doctoral degrees, uh, in Taiwan. And next year, actually around the February, uh, the whole process for applying the Taiwan scholarship will start around February and, and March. And we encourage, uh, all the talented students and the startup team members. If you are interested, you want to do business in Taiwan, why not, uh, check out some of the, uh, check out the details. And also you can, you can go to study in Taiwan and you can create, uh, your startup, uh, teams over there. It's also one of the opportunities that we would like to share with you. And then, uh, so that's pretty much about my, uh, sharing today. And then, uh, if you want to know more, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. You know, the Taiwan, Taiwanese embassy, you can just Google it and then you ask for Jonathan. Right. Thank you so much. Awesome. 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 Jonathan, I, I really love to see the, the, the amount of, um, input that the Taiwanese embassy and Taiwanese government have in Sinusha. It's, it's, it's really gratifying actually to, to see and to hear that. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Asa. Okay, so now we head to the big part, all right? So tonight we have two presenters and today we wanna to start off with, well, one of my favorite things, food. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with superior catering. So it's a period creating it, and, and it's going, the presenter tonight is going to be Denisha Egard. So Denisha, your six minutes start up now. Superior catering, traditional flavor, quality ingredients, an authentic farm to table catering company. Next slide. Um, at Superior Catering, farm to table isn't just a concept, it's our way of life. That's because we believe that fresh local food and socially conscious green practices are essential for creating the best dining experiences. Every one of our menus are bursting with items that come fresh from the local farms. Our chefs don't just pick produce from farmers markets. They choose it from the farm themselves. Truly sustainable catering. Our sustainability practices don't end with the local farmers. We want to integrate the sustainability model into everything we do, from eco fuel in our shifers to no waste policies in our kitchens. Whether we are pickling and preserving excess produce from the farm or packaging meals for the school feeding program, you can rest easy knowing that we use fresh, local food and socially conscious green practices. Our vision is to create a lasting social impact within the community by helping people expand their employment opportunities and foster a more caring community. This business approach can significantly contribute to the achievement of these and the sustainable development goals, particularly SDG 2 and SDG 4. The problem you may ask, like other small island developing states, St. Lucia faces significant challenges of high levels of youth unemployment. In addition, the current pandemic and the increasing recurrences of droughts and new pests are a constant reminder that our food system is under threat and must become more sustainable and resilient. At the same time, the significant, the significant scale of the economic recession amid widespread job losses and reductions in income and remittances 
is raising serious concerns about hunger and malnutrition. The most vulnerable groups are already poor and food insecure, particularly amongst rural youth, women, and girls. We believe that our total available market is over 6,000 persons with a serviceable market of over 3,000 persons and with a 15% share of market of 450 plus persons. Our solution, sourcing of seasonal fruits and vegetables directly from smallholder farmers, employment of youth in sustainable farm to table catering business and support to community school feeding programs. How it works. We identify and secure fresh crops and vegetables from smallholder farms, in addition to our 10,000 square feet of harvest ready fruits and vegetables and expansion possibilities, which is then used in cooking and baking menus like breads, cakes, pastries, jellies, jams, fruit juices, and fruit bowls. These are being sold based on orders by our social media platforms, ground sales, and community outlets. Other opportunities abound. And the plan for a school slow. feeding scale-up project for 270 plus school age children facilitated with support from community schools, community members, local government agencies, and private businesses. Superior Catering operates with a clear, easy, and transparent business model. Superior Catering generates income for sales of its services and seeks to contribute to sustainable community development by creating employment opportunities for unemployed youth, single mothers, and women through established agribusiness. The results achieved since launching in May 2020 clearly demonstrates the value of Superior Catering's offer and equally highlights what can be achieved with an exception, exceptional founding team supported by quality partners. Despite some fairly challenging conditions in just four months, Superior Catering has achieved 650% growth in revenue. This has been aided by securing retail points in the community and city as well as through social media campaigns. Our marketing and sales approach uses social media pages, attendance of community events, establishment of ground sales teams, participation and signage at farmers markets, a focus on fresh sustainable local produce, participation in local food promotions and the creation of recipes and specialty ideas for consumers. The Superior Catering team is comprised of qualified, skilled, and exceptional people who are passionate about supporting all solutions to achieve their individual goals and live healthy, independent, and full lives. We believe in a world where every person has the resources, education, and access to live a healthy life, and our team is committed to striving for and driving this change. We see our competition as supermarkets, farmers markets, and community shops. Our ask, we are, we are seeking to raise $50,000 for Superior Catering. With this seconds, investment, we will be able to build out the initial team, support school and community initiatives, double our production to meet current demand and ensure we have the appropriate legal building blocks in place. And with this, we thank you. Great job, great job. Okay, so I almost feel like I want to clap. Let me just clap for you. <laughs> People, it's it's being up there and you're ready to share your heart, to, your heart to the rest of the world. It takes a lot. So I just want to give it a little clap and just know lots of other people are clapping out there for you. <laughs> Thank yeah? you. Okay, so now we get to the question and answer with our expert panel and our audience. So guys, go right ahead. Who wants to go first? Just a quick correction. We have um, question and answer with Denisha and the expert panel for 10 minutes. Can I go first? Go right ahead, Mrs. Dyer. No. Wow, I am really impressed, Denisha. I didn't think I would be coming to something so well nice and so well presented. It's my first time, okay? So excuse me. I really like the idea of 
it's like from to serving. I mean, what more could you ask? And I like the, the idea that you actually involve the farmers and you, you are not only creating employment for self, but you're looking at employing all those persons that we really need to be working on the farms, the young persons, the older persons. This is really a good, very good idea. And, but I'm a little concerned because you see now with the pandemic on and what we're hearing about like curbside pickup, delivery and all of that, I would like to know how you, you plan to factor that into, into superior catering. But generally, I, it's a very good idea. I am really, I'm wowed. Okay. In terms of, um, well, the, like, see how um, a lot of businesses are doing right now um, with the curbside delivery and um, elements of that sort. We are also looking into dealing with delivering to customers um, based on their location, um, and especially when it comes to um, providing essentials like bread and you know the ordinary stuff that persons would want but would not be able to reach too far for it, especially with the possibility of um, curfews and these kind of elements. So this is an element that we're working on. Okay. And another, another very good aspect of it I noticed is the school feeding program, mm -hmm. getting into the school feeding program because we really need to upgrade the type of food that the children receive with the school feeding program. And I, I think that's an excellent idea and you should really, if schools reopen that is, <laughs> when yeah. schools reopen, you should really push that idea because we really need to upgrade the nutritional aspect of the programs. So, so that's good, that's very good. Okay, so but just bear in mind that with the new normal, like we say, you really have to pay close attention to the, the not only the nutrition, but the presentation, you know, and the hygiene, the personal hygiene, the kitchen, hygiene, all of that, these, these factors will really add now more than ever. Okay, it's very good. I, I, I am impressed. I Thank hope you. I can meet you at some I will well, looking Michelle forward to meeting you as well. I don't know, Michelle, I don't know you, but then I think it's good. I'm excited. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mrs. Dyer. Okay. Excellent stuff. Let's keep the feedback going. Put those virtual claps in. Yes, I agree. And now we open up the next expert panelist, Mr. Um, Sean Sinclair, to give you know his feedback on Denisha's presentation and any questions he may have for her. Um. I think the, the presentation was very good. You could see she put a lot of work into getting this done. Um, what I would like, as far as the school feeding, how do you, what's your attempt to get into the school feeding? Because you know a lot of the schools already have their own canteens. So how do you get into the schools? Right, the idea is to not work against what they're doing currently, but to work along with what they're doing to ensure that the children's diets are balanced and not just, you know, one element in the in the lunch, probably just rice or you know, the ordinary stuff. And um, we we're looking at this to say that um, there's a lot of persons, and we've we've noticed um, a lot of poverty in in areas that you probably wouldn't expect. Yes. And um, yeah. a lot of these students, at some point or another. They would go to school even without even eating anything in the morning and that element would um would try to curb it um and go along with what the school is doing and balancing the nutri the nutrition and making sure maybe even something at home as well something they could take home with them maybe a a, a fruit basket or something of that sort 
Okay. Um, like I said, your presentation was very well put together. As far as marketing via social media, how has that helped you? Well, it's, it takes work in terms of putting together every single element, especially um, promotion flyers and that sort of thing. Uh, my business partner, his um, area of expertise is um, marketing and business development. So he works well with me in trying to put things out there and printed flyers, putting it out there as well. And um, also we recently got assigned a business development officer at um, the Ministry of Commerce, Mr. Clebert Hyacinth. So we are liaising with him and um, to ensure that things are going as should. One last question. As far as you say you have, I think you said 10,000 square feet of Nanju growing on presently? Yes. What's like, what's your main crops presently? How do you, like, you know, there's some of the vegetables, fruits, a seasonal. How do you plan to work with that as far as, let's say mangoes is in season. When mangoes is out of season, how do you plan to work with having other products? Right. Um, oh, well, like I stated in my presentation, we try to um, preserve a lot of um, the, the seasonal items in whatever we that we can to have the flavors um, incorporated in things later on. However, um, we don't just do one set of props. We, we make it diverse. So right now we would probably have cucumbers coming along, um, pumpkins. So we just, we, we multi, multi crop production and um, we make use of basically what we have available and what is not then we liaise with other farmers as well. So to keep, keep the, the cycle going and not just, you know, trying to do everything ourselves. Okay, so all right, you say you preserve your fruits. Is it in a puree format or you just freeze and say it would depend it would depend on the crop. It would depend on the crop. Um the fruits could be dried, um, they could be made into jams and elements of that sort. Um so it would all be based on the type of um crop that we we're trying to preserve. Here's my thing. If you're trying to address health, jams is not going to help the cause is going to worsen the cause of health. So I would just suggest why not look at puree and the stuff and being able to create natural products with it. Yeah, that's also a possibility, yes. Because if you're creating jams and you're trying to improve health, those two don't go hand in hand. Right. And this, okay. um, uh, um, in terms of the ground provisions and, you know, the bananas and stuff of the sort. Um, we're looking into producing flour with them. So drying it up and preparing it into flour and then we could use later on as we go along. That's a very good idea right there. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Any other questions? Two more minutes left for the expert panelists. Okay, if we have no questions from the expert panel, we now move to questions from the audience. Again, we move to questions from the audience and our moderator is going to be Ms. Lisa Yard. She will be um, calling out the questions. Please state your name and also who your question is directed to, whether it is the presenter or whether it is um, one of the expert panel, because you can, of course, ask um, the, the expert panel questions as well. If you have comments of encouragement, that's fine too. Please drop that in the chat and the comment box and Lisa will read those. Those persons who are watching via our YouTube channel, please post your comments um, and let us know who your question is directed to. And of course, let us know where you're joining from as well. So um, just signal to us. Um, and of course, we will call upon you and ask you to unmute yourselves, those who are um, on YouTube, and we'll permit you to ask your question. Lisa, do we have any questions or comments? No, not this time, Michelle. I'm seeing yeah. some questions being posted there, but um, it's being directed um, to me. Can you please post 
um select everyone when I'm you are posting on your, your side I'm sorry. exactly no um they're they're posting it in the wrong side um oh. can you please select everyone in the drop down menu you'll see everyone <clears throat> in the meeting please select everyone and then let us know who your question is for and then um type in your question um, or please unmute yourself and then you can go ahead and ask your question or make your comment. Um, I think we have something from Mylika. Mylika, please unmute yourself and ask your question or make your comment. Okay, I'm not hearing from my liquor. Um, she may have some audio issues. And um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to be asking questions on our end. Um, so let's um, engage a little bit more here. So Denisha, I'm really interested in your, your feeding program. And one of the, the SDG, you mentioned that you're dealing with the SDG goals as well. And what type of support are you receiving so far for superior catering in terms of ensuring that you meet your goals or you reach those goals? Who are your partners? Who are you working with to, um, you know, to, to accomplish what you're doing right now? Currently, it's just me and my partner trying to make things work. So everything is basically out of pocket at the moment. Um, I'm just well trying to sell our products as well, you know, putting out promotions for cakes and different elements so that we could um, deal with what we need to. Um, currently trying to, well, in the construction fees of my new kitchen, so... Um, it's a bit of a strain at the moment, but um, we're trying to reach out and see how, how far along we could get. Oh, thank you so much for answering that question. Um, I yeah, see a, a hand. Oh, we have a hand. Question. One moment before you, before you go ahead, Lisa. Um, we have a hand raised. Anita. Thank you very much. Um, Denisha, yes, I really enjoyed your presentation. There's a lot of confidence. A lot of thought, a lot of vision. Um, where are you located in St. Lucia? And secondly, how do you handle your competition? Because a lot of people are cooking food. So how do you handle your competition and where are you located? Currently, I'm located in the Millet area. And um, part of what we're dealing with is in the Moshi area, the, the land space um, and the crops and the vegetation, everything of that sort, majority of it is in the Rivermita Moshi area where my partner is currently located. And um, he's the one dealing with um, ensuring the day-to-day -day runnings of the farm element. Are you saying that um you're not really phased by competition? That's what I'm trying to find out. How do you handle there, competition? I believe, yes, there is competition, but I do not let it phase me because everybody has their, their own customers, their supporters. It's just a matter of getting things done, getting get, letting your, your work speak for itself, letting persons savor what you produce and let them do the, the encouragement or the speaking and the word of mouth kind of thing. So, because word of mouth was a long way. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we have some raised hands. Um, we have a raised hand from um, Isaiah. Hi. Uh, my question is, apart from money, what is the, the one thing that your business could use right now? Apart from the money. <laughs> Um, for, for sure, um, equipment, industrial equipment, and um, I would say assistance with the, the, the general output of information for the business, the, the promotion element, and, um, you know, getting a website up eventually. So basically the, the software aspect of it. Gotcha. 
Excellent. Okay. Thank you for your question. Um, Lisa, you can go ahead. Okay, we have a number of comments and questions. Malika wants to know whether or not superior catering owns a farm where they grow their own foods. The farm space is, um, well, my partner is the heir to the farm space. So it is, he is to use as he sees fit for the business purposes. And um, that's already how we said it. Okay, another question here from Montreal, Canada, from for Denisha. Do you foresee launching your project abroad as there are countries, communities for whom this could would help address some needs as well as help support economic, hold a second, zoom is very fast, support economic empowerment across the community. Um, they said great, um, they said great initiative. Yes, um, what, 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 what do you think about this comment? Okay, I'm not one to limit myself. So anything could be possible. Um, yeah, this, this is something that I could see myself going into eventually because helping persons is something that would go a long way um, in making, making an economy even better than what it okay. really is at the moment. Wonderful. Also, my little wants to know, um, you said that you only do orders. So since schools are closed, and, to, and not too many functions, how do you use up your excess products? At the moment we do, well, mostly cakes because that's um, mostly the orders I get at the moment, cakes, pastries. Mm -hmm. um, we started off with bread actually, um, in a time where, when we had our first um, shutdown, our first curfew situation, and um, this, it went really well because that's something that a lot of persons really needed and it was readily available and at a reasonable price. And so this is um, one element that we will be getting back into, um, just organizing things so that we could get back into it and, and produce it steadily and make it available to everyone and not just the ordinary bread, but different types of bread. Like I said, we'll be starting to do um, the flowers from different um, ground provisions and different crops. So that would be one element used in, in our bread production. Okay, that's about it for now. No, there's another question. There's one. We have a, a raise hand right now from S, S, F, SFT5216. Yes, ahead, please um, unmute yourself and um, state your name and go ahead and ask your question, please. I don't know if this is me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we, can. we can. Okay, well, this is Miss Agard's business partner. My name is Jimmy Clavier. Oh, and welcome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the presentation. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get on board for a while, so... Um, to answer uh, maybe two or three questions, um, as Ms. Agard indicated, I'm the heir, one of it as maybe five acres of property up in La Viemita, Valley Lord Avenue in La Viemita, Monchi. And um, about three to four acres of that property is unattended. Um, and what we've been trying to do is to basically utilize this space to produce food. Um, for different reasons, for ourselves, for our family, and hopefully for the community. Um, that's a, that's a, the very first element. Uh, with regards to the locations, I saw that last question there, locations in Cassis. Yes. Um, the, the, the situation right now is that um, I have a brother who's uh, also a baker, uh, a very senior baker. Um, he's worked with some of the major hotels on this island for uh, almost 20 to 30 years. And we are looking to see if we could set up a space within the Marshall area um, where we could actually do a distribution point, a bakery and green grocery. So the excess produce, which is the second question, 
Um, this is where we're looking at, apart from our own utilization and our catering elements, um, we are looking at how we could this is that to the community shop, to the to the um, uh, not just the schools, but then the community shops, the, the various locations within communities. This is why we've got the, the first setup was in La Viamita Monchi, and now the second setup is in within the Millet community because and the third setup hopefully is going to be in the Marshall community. We're looking at we are looking at it from a, a, on a basis of spaces and places where persons are. Um, well, it's not really necessarily rural, but you have a situation of, of, of maybe persons who are underemployed or unemployed and um, might be affected because of, especially school closures right now. We have you two have... more minutes left for questions from the audience. Okay, I'm just making a comment. I'm just finalizing. Um, so we are trying to use as much as what we are creating here, uh, producing here in ways and means to, to encourage and ensure that persons uh, within communities that are under, um, under service, if you want to call it, that they could have access to quality food at reasonable prices, essentially. Um, and just to add on, I also operate a social enterprise, which is focused on on youth development and uh, persons in rural communities in terms of their capacity building, building and enhancements. Yeah? Sorry. Bye -bye. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, wow. Jimmy. That, that, is, that is amazing. You, you have like a, a tag team going on right now. That, that has never <laughs> happened before. <laughs> so I am loving what I'm hearing and I'm seeing. And there are several people, you know, um, in the comments, in the comment box that are seriously impressed by what they're hearing as well. So Denisha and your colleague, you are on the right track. And we have just one last question for you. And um, we're going to allow Lisa to ask our final team question. Okay, um, for the final team question, I'd like to ask you, Denisha, what can the community do to help you and your business go forward? What can the community do? Well, like my... And we have um, one minute left. <laughs> okay. Like in my ask, we're basically trying to ensure that we have equipment and um, raw material in place so that we could deal with um, preparation of food element and um, maintaining what we, we need to, and especially when we have to add on to our current staff team. So that's basically it. And Thank you um, very much. And we have just run out of time. Thank you so much, Denisha. Great job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denisha, for that presentation. And now we go into our team announcements. Now, Startup Huddle St. Lucia has been around since 2018, and we have had a milestone. We've hit some milestones that, we, that are literally I am still amazed by. Um, one of which is that we were able to sustain this program, self-sustain this program for two years with our team, without any financial support. And I think that deserves a round of applause. And I wanna say thank you to my team members. Thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you so much for your tenacity. Thank you so much for sticking around with me and, you know, um, for, for basically, you know, toughing it out, especially in terms of COVID, we had to find ways to shift from in-person events and we had to look for the best virtual platforms just so that we can keep going. We would not allow anything to stop us because we realize that this platform is essential to the startup community. So I want to thank you so much. Sometimes persons dipped in their own pockets to ensure that this program kept running. And I want to say thank you to um, my team members. Thank you to the ambassadors, our ambassadors on the ground, our SHSL ambassadors. You have been sharing the word and spreading the word in community groups with your networks via WhatsApp and social media and keep that hashtag going, hashtag SHSL. So once you see that, just know that's one of our people on the ground promoting this on all social media platforms. And because of this, we were able to grow 
or help to grow the local entrepreneurial community. This is our safe space and our safe space is growing. So thank you so much to our um, local ambassadors on the ground. We crowned our ambassador of the year recently at our appreciation ceremony. And that was Miss, Mrs. Michaela Charles Noel. She was the, um, the top person, the top ranking person that was really pushing the work for the past year to ensure that we became a household name. So I wanna say thank you to our local ambassadors. I also want to say that Startup Hunter St. Lucia is here to stay, guys. It's here to stay. We are here for you. We are, um, this is for entrepreneurs run by entrepreneurs. And the last announcement we have is that our programming for 2021 is already there. We're going to keep going, as I stated. Um, we are taking a very little break. When I say little break, this is our last event for December. And our break is from now until our next event. But our event site is up. So we will be sharing that um, link with you. And you can actually register in advance for each event that we have for 2021. Because we're going to have this event on the second Wednesday of every month. You can mark your calendars. The second Wednesday of every month from 7 p.m., we will be having a Startup Huddle St. Lucia um, event and what is even more great about this particular um, set of events is that the people who are presenting are powerful phenomenal professional women who have just completed the dream to reality professional business training course and they are utilizing our platform to showcase what it is that they're doing to share their stories and of course to share with us their challenges and to get feedback and support from us. So I want to thank you ladies for being on the call. Some of them are actually in the audience and our two presenters are Dream to Reality ladies as well. So we are ever so grateful to be included in this initiative and our platform to be used um, so that those ladies can share their businesses and experiences. Um, so this, this is basically all of our announcements for, from our team. And I move to Isaiah so that he can introduce our second speaker for the evening. Excellent stuff, Michelle. Okay, now I said that our first speaker brought something that I liked, which was food. The second speaker is gonna bring in something that we all need, which is a relaxing massage or two. Now, tonight's speaker, all right, um, just a second. It's Divine, I like the name by the way, I love the name, Divine Hands Therapy Academy. So take it away. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Vincia Prince Samuel. I'm the owner of Divine Hands Therapy Academy. And this short video will help you out. Welcome to Divine Hand Therapy. My name is Vincent Prince Samuel. I am the owner and facilitator of this school. We provide body therapy, advanced therapy. This course is just the basic to help you develop yourself into becoming the best massage therapist you want to become, whether you want to own your own business or whether you want to work at a hotel. It's also a way of being self-awareness and I focus a lot on soft skills based on attitude. With a great attitude, you'd be a great therapist. I like to see all my therapists grow and move on to higher heights. divine hand therapy before we develop we saw some problems training trainers would always fail students students are not confident in expressing themselves to instructor of other opportunities as there are other there was no other massage school available my competitive nsdc and the holistic school of saint lucia My um, sole trader um, was Belfan. I got my um, startup from Belfan. And also 
My partner shareholder is Tracy Farron Academy from, from the Gale Beauty Spa. So we focus on unemployed person looking to, to become massage therapist, person who want to change careers, person who are interested in taking the course. Divine Hand Therapy is the only facilitator in St. Lucia that provides both CVQ and international course. We offer pre-assessment evaluation to avoid, to avoid students from failing. We provide a safety place where trainers are encouraged to experience themselves freely. Divine Hand, start, Divine Hand started to provide Cert, um, certificate massage training. Shareholders, Belfan, we meet at email or face-to-face. -face. Customers, local media, television, radio, local papers, social media, Facebook and Instagram. Our mark from 2015, when I started, we had only three students. Mm -hmm. It went up in 2016 at 30, 2017 at 50, 2018 at 45, 2019 at 15, 2020 at 17. We have trained a total of 195 individuals who are trained certified massage therapists. Startup loan was from Belfan. It took one year to complete my plan and, <clears throat> and set up Divine Hand Therapy Academy. We offer open for business in April 2019. In the future, we are looking to have our own business by April 2021. Thank you very much. Very good, three minutes and 35 seconds, very good. Okay, so that was quick and to the point. Um, so open up the floor to, uh, to questions. Between the expert panel and the presenter. Yes, from the expert panel and the presenter. Mr. Senka, are you still with us? Mr. Sinclair? Please let me share. Um, please unmute yourself so that we you can start with your questions. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can Hello? hear you. Yes, I can okay. hear you. Um, can you? I have a lot of questions, but I'm just going to limit to a few. Um, you mentioned starting up your own. I didn't understand when you said that starting your own business near the end of your presentation. Starting my own business. They said something about divine hands starting their own. I didn't understand. Having my own like building to to put my own academy. That's what the ending was. The own building. Okay, yes. okay. That's not what came across. That's what I'm asking. Okay. All right then. Um, with your students, how long of a process does it take for them to become therapists? Um, it, the process to become a massage therapist, that's based on the course that you enroll in. We have the body therapy, which is basically the Swedish and the <clears throat> aromatherapy. Then that will take them four, four to five months for them to um, complete the entire program. So how do you further assess them once they're done? Because you know as a therapist, I send them, to, I send them to internship for one month. Okay. And so from I'm, the internship, from the internship, the employer or wherever they are, if they decide to keep them, they keep them. Most of them keep them. Some of them end up doing massage on their own. Okay. And if they want any further 
um, training, they contact me and they come back for any further training. So what further training would they be getting? That's up to them. If they want to do deep, if they want to advance themselves or whatever they want to highlight in whatever they want to do. Okay, could you give us some of your courses? You, you name one course, the aromatherapy and the basic massage. What else do you offer? I offer the advanced therapy, deep tissue, reflexology, hot stones, shiatsu, Thai yoga massage, and the list goes on. Okay. Okay. So are you the one teaching all the courses or do you have other individuals teaching? Well, it's two of us. Yes, I am the one teaching most of the courses or I can get any other person who I feel that is more advanced in anything that my therapist wants to do. Okay. Okay, that's it for me. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. thank you so very much, Mr. Sinclair, for your questions. And unfortunately, um, Mrs. Dyer had to um, drop off the call for another engagement that she has. But this then allows the audience to ask their questions and to also comment, or should I say make their comments on um, Vincia's presentation and also her academy because she's act she actually has a school. This is, uh, this is very a different approach. Normally we have presenters with products and services that they want to sell, but this is a, a lady who has an actual academy or a school. Um, so Lisa, um, would you please um, check our boxes here for any comments or questions and check for any raised hands that we may have. Can I raise hand from Marvin Grant at this moment? Yes, Marvin, hi, you can good go evening. Ahead now. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, Ms. Vincia, I really love the fact that you're doing this and I'm really interested in actually applying to your academy. Um, I wanted to know for the switching careers aspect of it, um, I'm currently employed, but I would like to at least, you know, while working to enroll, is that still possible? And what are the times that I could um, yes. come by? I have evening classes, which is at 4.30 to about six o'clock because my evening classes are mostly for a lot of employed person. Like I've had teachers from the Ave Maria school, from Anglican school. So yes, you can apply and do the evening classes. All right, thank, thank you so much. I'll be looking forward to coming to your course. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You have another question here from Malika. She said, awesome, much needed question. Do you hold day spas or shows or show your, your students work? Actually, I do. Normally, I have a, a, mostly every quarter, I have something where I raise funds for person with hypotensive who suffer from that, or diabetic or cancer patient. What I do after, at the end of my three months training or five months training with my students, I invite persons to come in and then they pay a small fee so they get the students get the experience from the public to do the, the consultation with clients, meet different clients. And then that fund that I raise, I just send it to if the person is suffering from cancer and needs surgery. So I have that particular fund going towards the person's family and stuff. But yeah. They come in. Sometimes I'm open to public when my students doing the just the demos, the public come in and they get a back massage or probably a foot massage, they run about. Okay, another question from Corisha and Jimmy. She said, Benicia, um, hold a second. She said, Benicia. It's Vincia. Vincia, sorry. Okay. You mentioned about your own building. Would it be within the Castries Basin? Well, basically, that's what I'm looking for, my own building. Between the Castries Basin, because you find it's more kind of centralized and like everybody is more comfortable coming down to Castries. Okay. Also, yeah. another question from Henry 
Dauphin from Montreal. Um, do you help your students find opportunities after they finish the course? That's one yes, part. I. Uh huh. What did you say? I'm sorry. Just Go ahead, read the second part. Okay. Jobs are starting. Jobs or starting their business. Could that be a way to make additional revenue for you? Jobs or starting of the business? Yes. Well, business. when they have their own business, no, I don't get additional revenue from them. That's their own. That's their own business that they create their own employment for themselves. And then after they complete the course, they go to um, internship for a month. And after the month, they can decide whether they want to be self-employed or whether they want to apply for a spa therapy job that's available. Okay, another question here from Malika. Have you ever thought of opening an actual spa to aid with the employment? Well, actually I had an actual spa, but then I closed it to concentrate more on my academy. Um, I actually had some people working, but they wasn't pushing themselves to to uh, to um get clients. Like they wasn't um promoting themselves enough to get clients. So you'll find that aspect of it. I closed it completely, but on my own, like house calls and stuff, I actually still do treatments, but on my free time. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, that's about all the comments and questions we have so far. In two, four minutes, we have some time left. Any other question before I ask my own question? Well, yes, I have a question for Vincia. Yeah, go um, ahead, Michelle. Um, Vincia, <clears throat> I am a very um, strategic person when it comes to business. And um, I'm always looking for uh, a way for a business to survive even in even amidst the um you know challenges that you face now you participated in the dream to reality professional business training course and one of the things that you um you learned or you were taught was how to deal with challenges when they come and overcome challenges now right now we are living an actual challenge we are living in a challenge of a pandemic right yes. that we cannot escape from so no, how yeah, has yeah. that impacted your academy? Um, because of course, that is a, um, a high contact type of um, type of vocation. Persons have to uh, um, um, connect skin to skin, hands on skin. So since we are now being told to, told to physically distance, mm -hmm. how are you able to sustain your academy in this time? Well, at this time, Michelle, to be honest, that's my lowest ever. I receiving students coming in. So the fact that I had a small number this year, you find the place is big enough so that each person working. And what happened is with the protocol list that they gave us, we had to get a thermometer to check the person temperature, always wear a mask, hand sanitize. And then what I did at one point that I literally showed my students how to massage with gloves. So then they had their mask on and some of them, they massage with gloves. That's one thing that I did. But with the pandemic, I think a lot of person who call, they really want to do the course, but due to financial and they're unemployed or they just lost their job, it puts a real strain on finance and everything in terms of divine hands. Okay, and I have a follow-up question to that. Thanks for your response. But my follow-up question to you is, so what have you, what are you now considering in order to keep your academy open? What alternatives, um, aside from just doing the massages or teaching the courses since um, your enrollment is very low, how mm -hmm. do you substitute you know, the income that you are losing um, what, are, what options have you considered trying in order to keep your business open? Two minutes well, left, people. Okay, some of the options that I've considered trying, Michelle, what I've done, I've, one, I've reduced on my prices 
And then a lot of therapists, existing therapists, what, what I invite them to do now, since Allied Health require refreshers, I advise them to come in for a refresher at a low price. So then that will keep my finance generating. Um, basically, that's what I'm doing right now. Oh my, well, thank you so much for answering um, you know, that question. Um, Lisa, do we have anything else from the, from the audience? No, not at this time. Okay, so let us go into our final question um, and I'll let Lisa do that. Okay, um, Miss Samuel, I love your presentation. I love your idea. I love how you give back um, to help persons who are unemployed. What I'd like to find from you before I ask my question, Mr. Ed Harris is asking a question. So he's asking, what is your current discount prices for massages? What is your current discount prices for massages? For massages or for, I don't have a discount prices for massaging. I have a discount price for the massage cost. So the discount price is 25%. Okay, Mr. Harris, you understood? Yes. Okay, great. I'm also so, I, so I guess you're gonna go you're gonna visit us pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Harris. We <laughs> have met. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry, Hello, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Okay, thank you on that on that on that on that question, Mr. Harris. Um, my question to you, Ms. Samuel. Um, as I said, great presentation. Um, I love your your idea. What I want to find from you, the same question I asked um, Denisha. What can can the community do to help you move forward in your business? Well, to be honest, what can the community do for me? Basically, I want the community not only to help me, but to help some underprivileged person that really want to do the course, but due to finance or any financial support that they don't get, I wish that the community would, because I have a group of young teenagers, youth, I should say, some of them have been unemployed or have never been employed, but they're interested in doing the massage course. What I would really want is to provide those person with a scholarship to do those programs. Wonderful, and the time is up. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Michelle, back to you. Well, actually it's back to Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, please take care of our last item on the agenda. Okay, so our last item for tonight as a community announcement, so we have any uh, community announcements? In other words, um, persons who are right now on the call, if you own a business or if you are affiliated with an organization and there's an event or activity coming up that you would like persons to attend or be a part of, um, this is your moment to share that information um, with us so that you know, we can potentially attend. Um, if it is that you'd like to connect with anybody on the call, please, of course, um, leave your contact information in the chat, your LinkedIn um, profile or your email um, so that persons can um, connect with you if it is that you want to connect with anyone. Um, Denisha and Vinci, I'm going to ask that you please put in your, the link to your Facebook pages. Um, in the chat, your email, your contact information in the chat as well, so that persons can reach out to you. Because another thing that we want to do is to encourage persons to patronize our businesses. When I say patronize, I mean purchase, buy something, you know, um, in terms of um, superior catering, place some orders in terms of, you know, Vincia Prince Samuel, um, sign up for her courses or recommend somebody. Um, or recommend somebody to sign up for her courses. Or if you would like to connect any of our presenters with persons who, um, who have the resources that they can use for their businesses, then yes, 
share that information as well. Drop that information in the chat. Let us know who the information is for so that our presenters will know um, what to look for. So again, any community announcements from anybody? This is your moment to share. If we have no community announcements, I will allow our presenters to share if they have any um, specials happening for the Christmas season or New Year's season, Vincia or Danisha. If you have any of that, please share that information with us. This is your moment. So, um, well, Michelle, um, the only um, promotion that I have going on is on the courses. Like I said, we have 25% of all courses that anybody wants to do. Whether so it's a singular one or a package, we have 25% going on until maybe until April of 2021. And right now, their registration is going on for January classes, which is starting on the 11th of January 2021. Excellent. Thank you. Michelle. Thank you very much, Michelle. You're very welcome, Denisha. And Denisha, do you have any specials or promotions for your business for the Christmas or New Year season that you'd like to share? Yes, I do. We have a Christmas special going on currently on um, black cakes and um, well, the standard size eight inch at eighty dollars and um, a dozen cupcakes at 50. And then we have a dessert box at $80. What comes in there is a six inch black cake and six cupcakes for the price of $80. And the deadline for orders and the payment of orders uh, the, the, is on the 19th of this month. And we deliver on the week, the week leading into Christmas. So from the 21st through to the 24th. Excellent, excellent. So do we have any black cake lovers on the call? <laughs> any black cake lovers who would like to place their black order? cake with a lot of fruits and raisins? Yes. Oh, and okay. one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> one thing. <laughs> and I need to put a plug in for my community. I'm speaking on behalf of my community now. Denisha, for persons who love into the meeting, do they get any discount off the cost of the cake? For the special? Yeah, for the, the yes, well, the special is already yes, already discounted. No, I'm just saying okay. a little extra something just for startup potential attendees, persons who want oh, to. Oh, those who are attending, right? And those okay. who like to purchase. Would you like? Would you um, consider giving them a little extra discount or a little gifts? You know, as a thank you for you know purchasing or patronizing your business. Would you consider yes, that? Yes, for sure. Um, persons on the call right now. Um, they will well put you on the spot <laughs> yes i should just say it. okay um there will be a discount for persons on the call right now so um whatever you order you will get um a discount off of your total your total um price mm -hmm. and um persons well persons who are interested in making an making an order outside of the persons who are on this call right now, they will have to state that they were locked in or paying attention and that sort of thing. And there will be an addition, a little something added to your order. Well, let's make it a little bit more interesting for superior catering. So yes, we're going to, now this is me basically trying to help you guys on the call, right? You realize that's what I'm doing, right? I'm trying to help you out to get uh. <laughs> for the season. But I also have a responsibility to assist Denisha. So let's go. So it, we're, it's all well and good for you to purchase. But let's say purchase a certain amount. Or if your order is with a certain value, then you get right. a little... Yeah, Discount. that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So we have to help our startup. So we're not just about giving for nothing. Yeah. We're telling yeah. you that we want you to spend a certain amount. And then if you do, you'll get a little a little something. But it's only available to persons on this call. And also our viewers are on the YouTube right now. 
who are um, of course joining with us. So if you would like to purchase or order um, from Denisha, please put in your contact information into the chat. Also, we will be sharing our online survey with you. So please look out for that survey. Those persons who would like um, to receive this survey, please leave your email in the chat and we will send you that. For completing the survey, you may be eligible for a prize as well. This is the giving season. COVID has wrecked us, but we're still standing. You understand? And we will also, keep going. Yeah. Michelle, may I add, yes. persons with birthdays coming up, any celebrations, um, well, they have to provide. I'm coming up in January. All right. Well, you you, ha you have commerce. Oh, my provide um, well, your ID as proof you will get a 10 to 15% discount based on your order, based on your total, your total order. I like that, based on yeah, your total Vince, order. You, you like set up. Um, Black cakes for March 14th, that's good too, you know. Oh Special my order. goodness. All right, then, all right. <laughs> the order like that. Hello, <laughs> Michelle. Yes? Has, S, has SFT5216 approved? <laughs> my partner, he's still there. What she's asking is, has he approved? <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife's here. I hope you'll, yes. you'll buy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing she'll have to run it by the partner first. Um, uh, he's yeah, he's good with all of those. <laughs> okay. Anita, I see your hand raised. you have a question or comment? I, I have approved. Oh, yes. wow. question to Mervyn. <laughs> Mervyn Budrum. Um, Michelle. Yes. Mervyn said something about on Mondays he has a creative discussion. But he was yes. too shy to explain oh, excellent, what's that. Excellent. Thank you, Mervyn. Explain that, Michelle. Um, Mervyn, what's that? Go ahead and make your announcement. Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Greetings. I'm actually from Birdies. And so tuning in, I, I do a weekly uh, show, Creative Monday Discussion. I'm, I'm the TV host for it. Um, it's aired on Facebook as well as YouTube, as well as a, a national channel here. I'm always looking, our show is about creatives transforming lives, and we seek to inspire, motivate, and transform lives through creativity and entrepreneurial innovation. So we're always telling stories of business owners, kind of diving into their, their journey and kind of helping people to get to know them a little bit more. So if anyone's interested to potentially be a guest on my show, um, we just finished season two, yes, Monday. Uh, we're taking a Christmas break, but we're preparing for season three launching next year. So if anyone's interested, uh, just visit that link, Creative Monday Discussion. I will put a form up there like within the next few weeks where you can apply um, to be a potential guest on our show. And, and you can also go and watch some of our past shows where we've highlighted business owners from the region, from the U.S., from, from Barbados, from different parts, right? And so it's all about, for us, we're all passionate about... Um, the stories from entrepreneurs and we're especially if you're doing something that's bringing transformation and inspiration to the community at large all right super thank that you wonderful so wonderful much, Irvin, for joining our call and i want to oh. highlight somebody else who's joining us um i'm sorry to put you on the spot miss this is helen frampton can you please unmute yourself and introduce yourself and let people know who you are and where you're joining us from and the organization you're affiliated with Helen, are you still with us? Okay. Well, Helen Frampton actually reached out to us um, via LinkedIn and she accepted this invitation to be on this call. So I want to say thank you um, to Helen for joining us. Um, we have um, several other persons who joined the call. We had um, an attendee who joined us from Kansas City. And I want to thank her so much. Darlisa, she's actually from the One Million Cups Fort Worth team um, from Texas, sorry, not Kansas City. So thank you so much, Darlisa, for joining us um, from the Fort Worth team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We did a collaboration with them um, last month with one of our presenters, um, Donna Hyacinth where she presented at One Million Cups Fort Worth with GEW. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, do we have anybody else who would like to say where they are joining us from if they're not from St. Lucia? Um, please introduce yourself. This is where we connect 
with persons in the community. Let us know who you are and where you're joining us from. from. For those persons who would like to connect again, please put your information in the chat, the link, so persons can reach out to you. Um, anybody would like to introduce themselves? Yeah, uh, a quick hello from uh, Canada. Uh, my name is Marie Dauphin. So we work with uh, tech startups originally from Canada, but now mostly in the US and Europe. So heard great things about the St. Lucia ecosystem. Very impressed by the, the, the organization, the startups that presented. So it was a pleasure really to, to, to be here today. All right, thank you so very much, Mr. Dauphin, for joining us. Mm -hmm. um, you said you're joining us, um, you're originally from Canada, but you're not based in the US. Um, what does your organization really um, do? Who, who is your target market per se? Uh, it's called the refinery. So what we do is we work with mostly technology startups, but we help them with everything from fundraising, uh, go to market strategy, user acquisition, um, and so forth. So, you know, Canada is pretty conservative. So a lot of startups have a lot of difficulty getting capital from investors. So what we do in most cases, we connect them with US investors who are usually more generous <laughs> than those we find in Canada. And most of the startups that we work with have to have an impact dimension. So it's not just about, you know, they're going to make a lot of money, but uh, kind of like the, uh, the, the catering uh, platform are well, are able to deliver value for people beyond just the clients. So really, really impressive setup, being able to integrate the workers, uh, things like that. So it has a, a social impact as part of the deliverables for the, the startup. So these are the, the type of startups that we work with. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Henry. Um, yeah, it was my pleasure. In yeah. Canada. Um, we have a comment here in the chat from Ms. June Jackson. She says she's from Antigua and Barbuda from the Guard Center. Thank you so much, June, for joining us. Um, please, everybody, leave your contact information in the chat. We would love to connect with you. Also, we'll be sending you, like I said, a survey, an online survey, just to gather your thoughts and, of course, your feedback on this evening's presentations um, as well. And this is basically it for the evening. Thank you so much. Michelle, for a question, please, for Mr. Dauphin. Oh, go ahead, Anita. Yes, thank you. Mr. Dauphin, Henry. Yes, sir. I yes. noticed you said you, you help serve like uh, help get funding for startups from Canada. Will you be, be willing to help similar startups in St. Lucia? Anything we can do to help, uh, absolute pleasure. Oh, super, super. Uh, yeah, anything we can do to help, an absolute pleasure. Um, Wonderful. You know, part of the mission of the company is really to be able to help, you know, people that, you know, have... Uh, they're not necessarily, they're marginalized a little bit. Uh, the investment world wants primarily to invest in, and that's the statistic. It's not just uh, me saying it, but you know, the profile, especially in the United States, is white men. That's who basically they want to invest. So our business is helping other people, people that are outside the, that, that segment, be able to get a fair chance at getting access to resources. So that's wonderful. What we do. So anything we can do to help, even though I'm uh, originally from Haiti, so I don't know if that's ah. an issue for anybody. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything we can do to help, it's an actual pleasure. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And just to let you know, um, I will be sharing the link to our event site in the chat. So this is the event site that you go to so that you can register for our upcoming event. Our next event is going to be on Ju well, January 13th. Again, our next event is going to be on January 13th in 2021. We look forward to seeing you. So look out for, um, so please register in advance for our events and look out for who our next presenters are going to be. So now I'm gonna pass the floor back over to um, Isaiah so that you can close us up for the evening. Okay, thanks a lot, Ms. Thanks a lot, Michelle, for um, passing the baton back on to me. Henry, you started to mention some stuff that made me want to jump out of my chair. Um, because when you <laughs> said about technology, you spoke about our bro uh, folks who look like us. It, it made me want to jump out of my chair. Um, because one of my dreams is in the area of information technology, more specifically, the fourth industrial revolution. And one of my great concerns is that us in the quote-unquote developing world 
um, catching into this before, the gap between the developed and the developing will become so great that we cannot catch up. And so uh, that's that's what what when you said that it just started to ring inside of me. And this is what stuff like this is about: connecting the right people at the right time. You know. So I'm definitely going to reach out to you. I sent you a little message, bro. We got to talk. <laughs> no, it's it's. Uh, I have to say this is very. This has been very inspiring. Um, what Michelle has been able to put together, and really this point for people like us to be able to talk to each other, exchange idea. Um, this is what fuels me. Uh, this is very inspiring. So I'm very happy that Michelle was extended the invitation, but look forward to getting to know everybody and, and be able to help any ways we can, even if it's just uh, sharing ideas and, and perspective on things. Definitely, definitely. So, well, yeah. guys, um, I almost don't want to end, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a, been a great night. It's been an awesome night. I want to thank all our presenters. I want to thank all our special guests from across the world. I want to thank especially Michelle for having the guts, the bravery, and the lack of sleep every now and then to put this together. She's laughing because she knows what we're talking about. But uh, it, it takes a lot to step out on your dream. And, and I want to encourage everyone who is watching, there is a safe place here, a SATA puddle where you can sit with people who understand what you're going through and uh, have a passion to see you get there. So good night, everyone. And look out for next year when we meet again to share. Have a good night, everyone. Out of Puddle St. Lucia out. Our team members say goodbye. Lisa, Anita. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next bye, year. Everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy yeah. New Year. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank you. Merry bye. Christmas. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Goodbye.